What is going on everyone? Jossie here and I'm really excited to kick off 2022 with a what's in my bag 2022 edition of course slash everyday tech video. those who are new here, welcome. I'm a front-end software engineer. I also am a content creator on YouTube. You can also check me out on Instagram where I have more like fashion kind of content with a little bit of tech and then TikTok as well where I do more lifestyle stuff and a little bit of tech. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And if you give this video a thumbs up, I will greatly appreciate it. Now this is not a everyday carry or an item that's in my book bag, but I hope you all notice that, well, it's probably obvious, but I got a new microphone and that's because I wanna prioritize audio for 2022. For those of you who've been following my channel for the past few years, you know that I love making really good cinematic content, but my audio has always been inconsistent. And when your audio doesn't sound good, it just doesn't make the video feel professional. And for me personally, it doesn't make me feel like smart. I, I know I'm not saying that I don't sound smart because I'm not using a microphone, but when you have professional audio, you do sound better, more eloquent, more professional. So ultimately you sound smarter. There's quite a few changes when it comes to what's in my bag for this year compared to 2021 and 2020. So if you've watched those videos in the past, I doubt anyone remembers what on earth was in my bag a year ago. I can't even tell you what was in my bag a week ago, but my lifestyle has changed significantly. I take the transit a ton, especially when going to work. So one thing that was important to me when it comes to my everyday carry is the weight, also size. You don't want a behemoth of a book bag while taking the transit you just look like an idiot and you take up way too much space also functionality tons of compartments i definitely had to upgrade my book bag now there are some items that you just keep and they're always in your bag consistently every year until that brand decides to make a newer version of that. And for this year, that's the Logitech MX Master 3. You'll notice with some creators that their everyday tech doesn't change that often because that basically means one or two things. One, you live in the same location you did last year, or maybe you did move and your lifestyle hasn't changed that much, or it means that you invested in basically the best version of each tech item and there's really no need to upgrade every year. All right, finally, let's get into the gear that is in my everyday carry for 2022. Starting out with the book bag, I'm carrying the Wondered Provoke light book bag. It is 11 liters. Now this is a newer version of the Wondered Provoke series of backpacks. Typically they have the 21 liter and the 31 liter, which is more commonly known. But I decided to go with the 11 liter because honestly, it didn't seem that much smaller than the 21 liter when I was comparing the two in B&H photo. And that's one of the blessings of living in the New York City area is that you can go to places like B&H photo and you can look at pretty much every camera bag, every camera lens known to man and get a chance to get a feel for it and see Get a chance to see that gear in person. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have chosen this backpack. I love the black colorway. I've been eyeing this backpack for like years and I decided to go with Peak Design instead. And then I wasn't super satisfied with that. Sold the Peak Design. And then I was using this bag, Smart Bag for a while because I really wasn't traveling. The pandemic happened. And then living in the Midwest, I really didn't need a camera backpack. But now living in the New York City area, you definitely need a very protected backpack that's secure with a lot of pockets, along with being functional for you to put your camera gear inside. The Logitech MX Master 3 has been my go-to mouse since literally the day it came out. I think most creators prefer this mouse because of its design. Fits perfectly in your hand. It's small so you can put it in your bag with no problem. And I love the infinite scroll wheel, especially when I'm reading through super long programming files. Along with it being a great mouse for video editing. I usually 
carry the iPad Air 4th Gen because it's light and can function as a laptop, especially when pairing the iPad Air with the Logitech Combo Touch. I typically will bring the iPad when I'm just trying to consume some content at a coffee shop or if I'm writing a script for a video like this. I'll also use the iPad Air for more simple content creation like editing pictures in Lightroom or editing a thumbnail. The display is really vibrant, so sometimes I prefer watching content on here opposed to my MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. The Logitech Combo Touch is incredible. Thank you again to Logitech for gifting me the Combo Touch some months back. My iPad experience has been significantly better with this edition. For one, I use the iPad way more because the Combo Touch keyboard is actually a solid keyboard with a great trackpad despite how small it is. It's also a really durable case that keeps my iPad protected. The only thing that's a little wonky or weird is opening the case. Isn't the most seamless experience, but other than that, I have no complaints and would recommend this case for anyone who doesn't want to spend $300 on the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad. You've probably seen the Lissy hard drive on pretty much every YouTuber's desk. So I just follow suit picking up a one terabyte Lissy earlier in 2021. If you're a creator, it's absolutely necessary to have a rugged backup hard drive, especially when traveling. So you're less fearful of losing your precious content. One thing I really like about the Lissy is how easy it is to use and how fast I can upload files onto the hard drive. The MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip has been my go-to laptop when on the go. The main reason is because of how compact and light this laptop is, and also it's powerful enough to get some video editing done on the go. I also can do web development on this device with no problem, like building and running a React application, along with running other tasks. The keyboard also makes my typing experience really pleasant, so I like to use this MacBook Pro for typing out my YouTube scripts when on the go, along with doing administrative work like responding to emails and reaching out to brands. I upgraded from the 11 Pro Max to the iPhone 13 Pro in this beautiful Sierra Blue colorway about a month ago. I absolutely love this iPhone. The camera is unbelievable considering how small this iPhone is. I actually found myself using the iPhone 13 Pro more than my camera to take pictures and I use it for all of my IG and TikTok content. I decided to go with the Pro instead of the Pro Max because I just think the Pro Max is way too big and takes up way too much space in my pockets, especially when I'm biking or going on a run. I could literally make a whole video talking about this camera, but in October of 2021, I upgraded to the Sony a7S III. This camera is sharp and performs incredibly well in low light. I love shooting in 4K at 60 frames and 120 frames per second, and I've recently been shooting my more software engineering focused videos in 1080p 10-bit, which looks really, really good. The swivel screen has made all the difference in making sure I'm in focus and having the correct settings for the environment I'm in. I've had the Tamron 28 to 75 for I think almost three years now and it's my go-to lens when I'm out and about because I can still vlog at 28 millimeters but also can punch in at 75 millimeters if I want to capture something further away. I will say I wish I had the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 instead because i think sigma's colors look a lot better than tamron this lens is probably the most versatile lens though that sony offers outside of the sigma 24 to 70 and the really expensive sony g master 24 to 70. last but not least the airpods pro those headphones have been my go-to especially since i'm in an area where there's more hustle and bustle and i like to keep my backpack light. I've really replaced these with my over ear headphones. And I think it's because these are more comfortable and they have the noise canceling capability. So they really just check off every box I'm looking for when it comes to a headphone. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below some of your favorite everyday tech items. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And as always, have a blessed rest of your week. I'll see you all soon. Peace.